We have some updates on the terrorist attacks in Brussels. Authorities have identified uh, more of the suspects and the suicide bombers. Now, one of those suspects actually happened to be one of the people who built the bombs for ISIS, which makes the story a little more questionable and, and, and curious because usually ISIS goes to extreme lengths to protect those people because, of course, they're going to use them in terrorist attacks in the future. Now, Najim Lakhchouri, uh, 24, who is believed to have prepared explosives for the November Paris attacks, blew himself up at the Brussels airport on Tuesday. Uh, he joined forces in the suicide attack with Ibrahim al Bakrawi, a 29-year-old Belgium with an extensive criminal record. A third man who left a bomb in the airport but escaped is still at large. Now, uh, two of the suicide bombers were brothers, okay? And uh, Ibrahim and Khalid al Bakrawi are the two brothers uh, that have been identified as the suicide bombers. There is one man at large. And the reason why they were discovered or identified is because there was a cab driver who reported to the authorities immediately after the terrorist attacks and let the, uh, them know that he had taken them to the airport. At that point, authorities uh, followed the trail of where the taxi cab driver had picked them up, and they found a computer belonging to one of the suicide bombers, and they found the suicide bomber was very much concerned that the authorities were closing in on him anyway because he was tied to the Paris attacks. And so that's part of the reason why he decided to go ahead and do the suicide bombing. He knew he was going to get caught anyway. So the theme I pick up on here is the guy who orchestrated the Paris attacks was caught recently. He left a suicide vest behind and didn't kill himself during the Paris attacks. The seven other guys did. Um, and he was wounded in a battle with police in Belgium but, but, but captured. The guy who apparently orchestrated this is the one guy that's missing. Mm -hmm. um, so the other two guys who had criminal records, yes. and so they get them riled up, and then they blow themselves up at an airport and a subway station, do all this damage, 34 killed, over 200 injured. Uh, meanwhile, the guys who planned it always seem to kind of walk away. They, you know, I, I've said it a hundred times, but if, if and I hope to God you're never in a situation like this, but if. Uh, a terrorist ringleader ever asks you to put on a suicide vest, you have got to ask him to go first. Because it turns out, <laughs> after you're gone, they quietly take off the suicide vest and get the hell out of there. Right. There was what there was a bomb at the airport that was detonated. Thankfully, the authorities found it before it exploded. Apparently, it might have failed and they uh, successfully detonated it. But the person who left that bomb at the airport has escaped. So that's who authorities are looking for at the moment. Now, in terms of the computer uh, that the authorities discovered belonging to Ibrahim, they found uh, that there was a will there, which is kind of interesting, right? Like, mm -hmm. oh yeah, who's going to respect your will? But on top of that, they found that he had written, in a hurry, no longer know what to do, being searched for everywhere, um, no longer secure. Kind of showing that he knew that they were closing in on him. He knew he was going to get caught, and he was worried that he would end up in a prison cell uh, and not be able to carry out more attacks, and this was his final one. Well, beyond that, he was scared of prison. Isn't that interesting? Mm -hmm. A guy who blows himself up, blows up all those people, uh, but he was afraid of us. And so us as in, you know, uh, the, the citizens of all, the, all these countries that they, we would bring him to justice. So he blew himself up uh, in, in partly an act of cowardice. I mean, you would think, look, B Bill Maher got in trouble for this a long, long time ago. And he said, well, look, look you can call them a lot of things. They're not necessarily cowards because they flew a plane into a building referring to 9-11. And you'd think that maybe the same with a suicide bomber. No, but it's a means of escape in some ways. Absolutely. Their life is, is not a good one. They're bitter, right? And, and they're afraid of prison, so he's like, I'll take the easy way out and, and become a martyr and a hero in some people's minds. Now, one of the people that, were, that was hurt in the attacks was uh, a Peruvian uh, mother. So they always, it's why violence never works. It's counterproductive, it's immoral, it's stupid. And so, what, you got that woman from Peru. Congratulations. Like, what, what did you do? What did you accomplish? So, you, you didn't hit the. The policymakers, whatever in your mind you thought you were fighting against, right? Mm -hmm. and, uh, and but the reality is that's all an excuse. It's a facade. They want glory. You know, it, these two brothers—they were basically losers. Their life was going nowhere. You can tell it in their suicide note. Mm -hmm. You can tell it in, in in the history of 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 what the kind of trouble they'd gotten themselves into. And they thought, okay, now I get to be something bigger than myself by killing Peruvian mothers. So it, no, it's. 
It's so foolish and all you ever do is hurt the innocents and if you think in your perverted mind that you're fighting some sort of glorious cause, you don't do that by blowing up mothers. Two of the suspects, uh, including one person who was seen on surveillance uh, footage, are now being searched for by the authorities and we'll report on that as soon as we have more details on it.